The soft glow of my laptop screen illuminated the darkened room as I scrolled through the listings on Craigslist, searching for the perfect deal. My eyes scanned the listings. I was trying to find an ad for a vintage record player with a decent price. I was a little skeptical. The seller's location was in the middle of nowhere, but the price was too good to pass up, so I sent a quick message to the seller, arranging to meet later that evening. As I made my way to what felt like the middle of nowhere, I got the feeling something wasn't quite right. But I brushed aside my doubts, chalking them up to paranoia. When I arrived at the address, I found myself standing before a rundown house, its windows boarded up and its paint peeling away in strips. The first warning sign I ignored. I decided to press forward anyway because I was determined to get that record player and get out of there. I knocked once, no answer. I knocked twice, and the door opened slightly. As I stepped inside, the air grew heavy with the scent of decay and neglect. Another warning sign I ignored for that damn record player. Shadows danced on the walls, their movements haunting and eerie. I called out to announce my presence but there was no reply. Instead, I found myself drawn deeper into the darkness, my footsteps echoing through the long, empty halls. Then, from the shadows, a figure emerged behind me, a man, his face covered in darkness, his eyes filled with malice. He locked the door I came through. I knew in an instant that I walked right into a trap, lured in by a madman who preyed upon unsuspecting victims. Panic seized me as I realized the danger of my situation. With nowhere to run, I prepared to fight for my life, my heart pounding in my chest from the adrenaline surging through my body. With a roar of defiance, I launched myself at the Craigslist killer, my fists raining down upon him with all the strength I could muster. But he was a formidable opponent, his movements quick and precise as he countered my every punch I threw at him. The scent of sweat and blood filled the air as we grappled with one another, locked in a deadly battle of survival. Each punch and kick was met with equal force, the sound of our struggle echoing through the empty house. Despite my best efforts, the killer gained the upper hand, pinning me to the ground with a strength born of madness. With an evil grin, he raised a knife above his head, poised to strike the killing blow. But just as the blade descended, I summoned every ounce of strength within me and lashed out with all my might, sending the killer sprawling to the ground. With a roar of victory, I scrambled to my feet and fled into the night, leaving the darkness and terror of that house behind me. As I emerged into the cool night air, the weight of what had transpired settled over me like a shroud. I had narrowly escaped the clutches of the Craigslist killer, but the memory of that fateful encounter would haunt me for the rest of my days. From that day forward, I vowed to be more cautious in my online dealings, knowing that the shadows of the internet held dangers far beyond my wildest nightmares. And as I walked away from that house of horrors, I knew that I had survived against all odds a testament to the strength of the human spirit in the face of unspeakable evil. The moon hung high in the sky as my friends and I ventured into the old cemetery on the outskirts of town. It was supposed to be a harmless adventure, a chance to explore the eerie tombstones and crumbling mausoleums under the silver light of the full moon. But as we delved deeper into the shadowy depths of the graveyard, I could feel a sense of unease settling over me like a heavy fog. The air was thick with the scent of damp earth and decay, a tangible reminder of the countless souls that lay buried beneath our feet. The ground was soft and muddy, the recent rain turning the pathways into treacherous quagmires 
that threatened to swallow us whole with each step we took. But despite the ominous atmosphere, we pressed on, our curiosity driving us forward into the heart of the cemetery. We wandered among the rows of tombstones, our flashlights casting eerie shadows against the ancient stones as we searched for signs of the supernatural. And then, just as we were about to give up hope of finding anything out of the ordinary, we stumbled upon it, a series of freshly dug graves, their gaping maws yawning wide in the moonlight. My heart sank as I realized what we had stumbled upon, graves that had been desecrated, their occupants stolen away into the darkness by some unseen force. But the horror didn't end there. As we peered into the depths of the open graves, our flashlights illuminating the grim contents within, we made a chilling discovery. Bodies, missing limbs, their faces frozen in silent screams of agony, as if they had been torn apart by some savage beast. A chill ran down my spine as I realized the true horror of what had transpired in this unholy place. Someone or something had been lurking in the shadows, preying upon the dead with a savage hunger that defied comprehension. And then, just as we were about to turn and flee from the cemetery, we heard it. The sound of footsteps echoing through the darkness, growing louder and more ominous with each passing moment. We froze in place, our hearts pounding in our chests, as we waited for the source of the sound to reveal itself. And then, emerging from the shadows like a wraith, from the depths of hell, we saw him, the grave robber. His eyes gleamed with madness as he surveyed us with a predatory gaze. His lips curled into a cruel smile that sent shivers down my spine. Without warning, he lunged forward, his movements quick and vicious as he closed the distance between us with alarming speed. Panic surged through my veins as I realized that we were trapped, with no means of escape from this deranged lunatic who had made the cemetery his twisted domain. But just as he was about to reach us, something unexpected happened. The grave robber stopped in his tracks, his eyes flickering with uncertainty as he regarded us with a mixture of anger and disdain. You shouldn't have come here, he growled his voice low and menacing as he took a step back, his hands clenched into fists at his sides. This is my territory and I won't let anyone take it. With that, he turned and disappeared into the darkness, leaving us alone in the cemetery with nothing but our fear and uncertainty to keep us company. We wasted no time in fleeing from the graveyard, our hearts racing as we ran through the winding pathways, desperate to put as much distance between ourselves and the grave robber as possible. As we stumbled out of the cemetery and back into the safety of the moonlit night, I couldn't help but feel a sense of relief wash over me, a relief that we had escaped with our lives intact, and a newfound respect for the darkness that lurked in the heart of the cemetery, waiting to claim its next victim. The fluorescent lights overhead cast a harsh glow over the aisles of Walmart, illuminating row upon row of merchandise with an unnatural brilliance. The familiar scent of artificial air fresheners mixed with the overpowering aroma of freshly baked goods, creating an unsettling contrast to the tense atmosphere that lingered in the store. I had come to Walmart for a simple shopping trip, a few groceries, maybe some household essentials, but as I made my way through the crowded aisles, a feeling of unease settled over me. I could feel it in my bones that something wasn't right. The air seemed heavier here, tinged with an undercurrent of tension that prickled at the edges of my consciousness. I tried to shake off the feeling, telling myself that it was just my imagination running wild. But as I wandered deeper into the aisles, the sense of dread only grew stronger, 
like a weight pressing down on my chest. And then, the lights flickered overhead, casting the store into darkness for a brief moment before springing back to life. I glanced around nervously, but no one else seemed to have noticed, a fact that only served to heighten my sense of isolation. With a shaky breath, I continued on my way, my footsteps echoing in the empty silence as I made my way towards the grocery section. But as I turned down one particularly dark aisle, I felt a chill run down my spine, a feeling of being watched, of unseen eyes tracking my every move. I paused, my heart pounding in my chest, and glanced around nervously, but the aisle was deserted. I tried to shake off the feeling, chalking it up to nerves, but as I continued on my way, my feeling of unease only grew stronger. And then, just as I was about to turn back, I heard it, a soft, whispered voice, drifting through the darkness, barely audible over the hum of the fluorescent lights. I froze, my blood turning to ice as the words registered in my mind, a single, chilling phrase that sent shivers down my spine. Come find me. With a surge of adrenaline, I turned and fled, my footsteps echoing in the empty silence as I raced towards the checkout lanes. But no matter how fast I ran, the voice seemed to follow me, growing louder and more insistent with each passing moment. I rounded a corner, my breath coming in ragged gasps, and skidded to a halt as I found myself face to face with a figure lurking in the shadows. A tall, shadowy figure with eyes that gleamed with an otherworldly light. With a cry of terror, I stumbled backwards, my heart pounding in my chest as I backed away from the creature. But it only advanced towards me, its movements fluid and graceful as it closed in on me with unnerving speed. Desperate, I reached out for anything that could be used as a weapon, my fingers closing around a can of soup on the nearby shelf. With a trembling hand, I held it up in the air, attempting to scare the creature, hoping to fend it off long enough to make my escape. But the creature only laughed, a low, guttural sound that sent chills down my spine. As it lunged forward, its claws slashing through the air with deadly precision. With a cry of despair, I swung the can of soup with all my strength, striking the creature squarely in the face. To my surprise, the creature recoiled, its grip loosening as it stumbled backwards in pain. Seizing my opportunity, I turned and ran, my heart pounding in my chest as I raced towards the exit, the sounds of the creature's enraged cries echoing in my ears. As I burst out into the safety of the parking lot, gasping for breath and trembling with fear, I knew that I had narrowly escaped death. I knew I had to get out of there and never return to that Walmart again. It's been a while since I've last gone grocery shopping. The haunting memories of that incident will forever be etched into my brain like a tattoo. It was 3 p.m. on a warm, humid spring day when my friends and I decided to go to our secret hangout spot to watch the solar eclipse. It was a burned down abandoned factory that has since been long forgotten. The tragic incident happened decades ago, even before we were born. Our hangout spot was secluded, surrounded by tall trees and a small creek that ran behind the factory. We walked on a dirt path riddled with sheets of metal and shards of glass. The factory has boarded up windows and was decorated with graffiti. It was run down and a little scary, but the abandoned factory was our escape from the world when we needed a break from it. We made our way to the side of the factory, climbing a sketchy old rusty ladder to get to the roof. We thought it would be the prime opportunity to watch the solar eclipse from there. Bruh, 
Did you forget the chairs? Forget? Why would I forget? We don't need them. Dude, I specifically asked you to bring them because I wanted to relax and watch the solar eclipse. You'll be fine. Besides, I brought your favorite beer. A little slight six pack. <laughs> fine. You just bought your way out of trouble. Lighten up. Alex, you want a beer? Nah. Thank you, though. Oh, all right. More for us. I was slightly annoyed that he didn't bring the chairs, but it wasn't a big deal. My friends and I talked about our classes and what we want to do after college. Max wants to be an accountant, and Alex, a psychiatrist. I'm not sure if I'd ever trust Max with my taxes since he can't remember to bring chairs. We decided to pass a little time by goofing around. We started having a rock war on the roof, taking cover behind vents and large sheets of metal. Then Max proposed a dare. Jim, I dare you to look at the solar eclipse without your glasses. I don't think that's a good idea. He could go blind. And what do I get in return? Oh my gosh. I will get you another six pack, bro. And hear me out. I'll talk to that girl for you. I know she had a fat crush on you and you're too scared to talk to her. And what if he goes blind? He'll be all right. As long as he looks at it while the moon is covering the sun. Deal. Hell yeah. You will not regret this, bro. <sighs> Guys are idiots. The sky was getting darker and the temperature started to drop as the moon moved in front of the sun. We pulled out our solar eclipse glasses to witness the beautiful once in a lifetime moment. Just as the moon moved in front of the sun, I could hear fireworks go off in the distance and my friends cheering on in excitement. Hesitating, I take off my solar eclipse glasses. I close my eyes and point my head up at the sky. What's the worst that can go wrong? I think to myself. I open my eyes and look at the solar eclipse. Looking at the eclipse didn't hurt my eyes. As I watched the eclipse, I noticed the temperature drop significantly. It was freezing cold. I could see goosebumps form on my skin. I could see my breath in the air. That's how cold it was. I could smell something as if it was burning, like, like a bonfire. I turned to my friends. Guys, I did it. I looked at the eclipse. That's when I noticed there was someone standing next to my friends. As I looked behind me, I recoiled in fear. I could see more people watching the solar eclipse. Except, they weren't people. They looked like spirits. Spirits of the undead. The spirits were dressed in factory clothes. Their faces, some burned and some decayed. Most had burned skin and some missing limbs. Their eyes were glowing red with malice. I looked at my friends. They were still staring at the eclipse. Guys, are, are you seeing this? What? This awesome eclipse? Yeah, bruh. This is cool. I'm surprised you can see. Have you been looking at the eclipse without your glasses? Not that. The, the people behind us. As they take off their eclipse glasses and look behind, they see that no one is there. What are you talking about? I don't see anyone. Are you hallucinating? I told you not to look at the eclipse without your glasses. I point in the direction of one of the spirits. There's someone standing right there. You can't see them? Dude, you're crazy. They dismiss my worries and put on their glasses to watch the eclipse again. As I turn my attention away from my friends, I look back at the spirits and I'm met with glowing red eyes staring back at me. Can they see me? I think to myself. The spirits look furious, as if they were mad that I could see them. Then suddenly, they start to conjugate towards me. They reach their hands towards me as they advance, I start to move back. I could hear them in a quiet tone saying, Eyes. Eyes? Do they want my eyes? 
think to myself. I backed up towards the edge of the roof. As they closed in on me, they started saying, Eyes, louder and louder. I could smell their rotten and decayed flesh. It was putrid. It was so strong that it almost made me vomit. I start to panic as I realize that I'm cornered and I have nowhere to run. I called out to my friends. Help! Help, they're trying to take my eyes! My friends ignore me. The spirits reach out for my face. I try to fight back, but once they get close enough to reach me, I throw a punch. Nothing. My hands go right through the spirit's torso. The spirits grab me and throw me to the freezing cold roof, one by one grabbing my arms and legs, pinning me to the ground. I try to fight back, but every time I struggle, more and more spirits hold me down. I scream in horror as I realize the danger that I'm in. I started pleading to the spirits to let me keep my eyes, but the spirits ignore my pleas. The spirits start reaching for my eyes, almost fighting over them. Please! Please! No! The spirits start pulling out my eyes. I scream in pain as I can feel each optic nerve getting ripped out of my eye sockets. I start screaming and crying, pleading for them to stop. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. The solar eclipse is now over. I loved it. It was such an invigorating experience. Whoa, Jim, you good? My friends walk over to where I lay. I'm still crying and now fling my arms like a lunatic. What happened to your eyes? Your eyes are cloudy and white. I try to open my eyes. I'm blind. I can't see. I told you you'd go blind. N no! The spirits ripped out my eyes. To this day, no one believes me on how I lost my eyesight. They all believe I was dumb enough to stare at the sun during the eclipse. Every day, I am haunted by the spirits that took my eyes and made me blind. The vast expanse of the ocean stretched out before me, an endless sea of blue that seemed to swallow the horizon whole. I stood on the deck of the cruise ship, the salty breeze tangling in my hair as I gazed out at the waves with a sense of wonder and awe. But little did I know that soon, the ocean would become my prison, and its depths would be my tomb. It started with a misstep, a moment of carelessness that would change my life forever. As I leaned against the railing, lost in the beauty of the sea, I felt a sudden lurch beneath my feet. Before I could react, I was tumbling over the edge, the cold embrace of the ocean swallowing me whole. The darkness enveloped me like a suffocating shroud as I plunged into the icy depths of the ocean. The sharp sting of salt water filled my lungs and panic seized me as I realized what had happened. I had fallen overboard from the cruise ship and no one had noticed. Desperation clawed at my chest as I thrashed in the water, my screams swallowed by the vast emptiness that surrounded me. The ship disappeared into the distance, leaving me alone in the unforgiving embrace of the sea. For days I drifted aimlessly, the relentless sun beating down on me turning my skin to parchment. Thirst gnawed at my throat, and hunger twisted my insides into knots. I clung to a piece of driftwood, the only lifeline between me and the abyss below. The days blurred together into a haze of exhaustion and despair. I lost track of time, lost track of myself as the horizon stretched endlessly before me. The sea became my prison its vast expanse both beautiful and terrifying in its emptiness. I began to hallucinate, seeing faces in the waves, hearing voices carried on the wind. They whispered secrets to me, secrets of the deep that sent shivers down my spine. I saw monstrous creatures lurking in the depths, their eyes gleaming with hunger as they circled beneath me. But the worst visions were the ones of home, 
of loved ones long gone. I saw my mother's face, her eyes filled with sorrow as she reached out to me, only to vanish into the foam. I heard my father's laughter, echoing across the waves like a distant memory. The smells of salt and decay mingled in the air, a constant reminder of my own mortality. The taste of brine coated my tongue, leaving me parched and desperate for relief. Every breath was a struggle, every heartbeat a reminder of my fragile existence. Just when I thought I could bear it no longer, salvation appeared on the horizon. A faint sound reached my ears, the rhythmic thumping of boat engines slicing through the air. Hope surged within me as I waved frantically, my voice hoarse from screaming. The National Guard rescue boat appeared, its lights cutting through the darkness like a beacon of hope. Strong hands reached down, pulling me from the water and into the safety of the vessel. Tears of relief streamed down my face as I collapsed onto the deck, my body racked with sobs. I was saved, rescued from the clutches of the sea that had threatened to swallow me whole. But as the boat carried me away, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that lingered in the pit of my stomach. The ocean had changed me, leaving behind scars that would never fully heal. And as I looked back at the endless expanse of water below, I couldn't help but wonder what other lost souls lay hidden beneath its surface, waiting to be discovered. For in the heart of the sea, there are secrets that defy understanding and horrors that defy imagination. <laughs>